Right now, a breakthrough in the Crystal Rogers case after eight long years for the family and people of Bardstown. It's our top story right now at noon. A Nelson County man was arrested in connection to the Crystal Rogers disappearance. 32 year old Joseph Lawson. That's him right there on your screen. He's facing multiple charges. This is the first arrest and charges that we've seen in any of the five unsolved Bardstown cases. His charges are specifically tying him to Crystal Rogers case. Now, Crystal disappeared over 4th of July weekend back in 2015. Her father, Tommy Ballard, later found her car along the Bluegrass Parkway. Inside, he found her keys, cell phone, and purse. Rogers had been presumed dead since October of 2015. And since then, Rogers' family, multiple law enforcement agencies, and many within the Nelson County community have worked endlessly to find answers. Now, one of those people working endlessly is to find answers. Shay McAllister, you're joining us now live, of course, right here in the studio to help us break down this new development. Yeah, so I think first let's get right to the charges so we know mm -hmm. exactly what we're dealing with here. So the first charge is conspiracy to commit murder. This is in connection to an incident on 4th of July weekend, 2015. Important to note, that is the very weekend that Crystal Rogers was reported missing, the last time anyone saw her alive. Some of the details we learned in the court documents, which we just got from the Nelson County Courthouse this morning, is Lawson's accused of agreeing to aid in the planning or commission of a crime intentionally causing the death of another person. He has pled not, pleaded not guilty to that one. The second charge in this case, tampering with physical evidence. Again, it's in connection to an incident on 4th of July weekend, which is the big weekend in this case for when she was reported missing. This one breaks down to mean that he is accused of destroying, mutilating, concealing, or removing or altering physical evidence in the case. We have no idea what that evidence could be. The details of these indictments are sealed. So really, we just know the details of the charges, not what they actually mean. Here's what we know about the timeline. So this indictment was filed in June of 2023. That is actually when the grand jury came back with the indictment earlier this summer. The arrest warrant was signed and executed in August, and he was just now arraigned in court yesterday. And when we say in court, we mean it loosely because he was actually in a hospital bed. Take a look. Like the formal reading of the indictment has been affected. The court's going to enter pleas of not guilty in both cases. The court is going to we already told you that he has pleaded not guilty in both of these cases. <clears throat> you see him right there in the hospital bed. The only time I heard him talk while listening to this video from yesterday is when he was asked his birthday to confirm his identity. And he said, yes, sir, that's my birthday. That's it. Haley, they set another court date for the end of October. OK, so obviously there's still a ton of questions. A lot of answers you're still working on getting. But first of all, we've never heard this guy's name before mm -hmm. in connection to this case. Do we know what that connection could be right now? Well, as you can imagine, Nelson County small community room mill is flying. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks they know the connection here. Sure. And we just have not confirmed it just yet. Mm -hmm. Lawson, his last name is a name that we have heard in this case before. Mm -hmm. It was a name that was brought up during an interrogation with Brooks Hauk back many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not connecting the two. We haven't been able to do that just yet. So we don't know how he may or may not know them. I did ask the Ballard family, Crystal's family, have they ever heard this name? They said no. Yeah, and obviously this is a big case. Now it's become a national case, a federal case. Um, did you talk to the FBI? Do, are they expecting to do any more searches or any more arrests to be made You know, today or immediate future? Well, I know today FBI and Quite frankly, all law enforcement agencies connected are saying incredibly tight-lipped. Mm -hmm. Nobody would answer my questions. Hardly anyone would even take my calls. Right. I'm not sure they were actually ready for all of this information to come out when yeah. it did. Um, so I know they're still working. One source very close to the case says they think this is just the beginning. They think there could be more arrests to come. All right, Shay, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Of course, you want to make sure you stay up to date on WHS11.com and on all Shay's social media pages. You've done an amazing job covering this case. So we know you'll have the latest as we get that information. Let's go ahead and take a closer look now at the timeline of the Crystal Rogers disappearance. The Sheriff's Office initially handled Crystal's case beginning on July 3rd of 2015 when Crystal was last seen alive. Her boyfriend Brooks Houck told police they fed cows at his family's farm then went home together. He says the next morning she was gone. After months of searching on October 16th of 2015, Ed Mattingly, who was the sheriff at the time, announced Crystal was presumed dead and declared Brooks as the main suspect. 18 months later, on November 19th of 2016, Crystal's father, Tommy, was out hunting when someone shot and killed him. His case is being investigated by Kentucky State Police. We're going to have more on Tommy's case in just a minute, but there would be no new developments until the FBI took over Crystal's case in August of 2020. 
They searched several properties, including the home of Brooks's brother, former Bargetown police officer Nick Houck, and the Houck family farm where Crystal was last seen. Through all of this, Crystal Rogers' mother, Sherry Ballard, has been fighting for answers, at times through frustration, other times through tears. It's just getting to be a lot on everyone, and I see the emotions it has on my daughter's kids. I feel like she was just here yesterday, but um, at the same time, I feel like I haven't seen her in a long time. Um, I just feel like a big hole has been left in my heart where she should be.